raised in the normal traditions of our, fem- our people. Can I have somebody on the, mic- on the camera because I'll move a little. Are we together now? She was born in the normal traditions of our people, raised with the normal traditions of our people, became somebody like any other woman. And I believe Jesus was born like any other man, raised like any other man, and that's why he went to help his father with the carpentry work. And that's why people would say, is he not a son of Joseph the carpenter? And so meaning, if circumcisions were to be done, if children playing was to be done, Jesus did everything like any other child. Are we together after that point? But though he was going through everything others were going through, he was enjoying life like any other person. But the Messiah nature was in him. His time was to come that the Messiah in him was to be made manifest. Now follow me carefully. For 30 years, Jesus was like any other man. For how many years? Meaning to say, you can be born a great woman, a great man, but it may take you 30 years living like any other person who doesn't carry greatness. Now follow me carefully. Jesus was God incarnate. Meaning to say, he was God in flesh, fully God and fully man. Are we together? But for 30 years, the God of Jesus was never made manifest. There are many of us today that are supposed to be great in this nation, great in this Africa, great in this continent, but your time to be made manifest is not yet ready. And therefore, you are going through what every other person is going through, though you are a Nazarite. Let me talk to some few people here. Are you following what I'm saying? You are born to be the Messiah of your village, your family. But though your time to be made manifest is not yet matured, you have to go through every other woman, every other man goes through until your time is matured. Naturally, in the natural mind, if you told Jesus at the age 30 that God sent you to save a man at 30 years of age should marry talk to me here. So I believe even his people are wondering, what kind of a son is this one? I know your path is somehow. But are you not a normal child like any other? So there is a greatness that you can have but it may not be made manifest until the time is right. I'll talk to some people here. And before the time is right, many people question the integrity of God. Talk like I, feel it here. I was told I am the Messiah. I was told my birth was prophesied. I was told I was supposed to save my people. But what is happening 30 years since I was born? Nothing of that nature is manifesting itself. You are, you are people that have prophecy here. You carry prophecy over your head. But you are looking at your life, you are looking at the prophecy, you don't look the same. Am I communicating now? And you are like, until when shall I stay here? Until when shall I cry? Until when shall I t- l- lament that the prophecy said, I shall be great? Though Jesus was God in flesh, but he, had, he said, my time has not yet. Or oh, talk to me. My time has not yet. Talk to me again. My time has not yet. Now, when your time has not yet come, there is no shortcut that you can use that will work for you. Every shortcut you try will expose you. Or oh, can I talk like I feel it here? Every shortcut you try will do what? Though you are the Messiah and it was prophesied that you are the star of your home, your family is looking up to you. A time is coming, God will take you far. A time is coming, you're not supposed to be in this country. You're supposed to be in the US, with the UK to make life and come back. There is a lot of prophecy over your head, but if the time of the prophecy is not right, it doesn't matter what is upon you. You have to go through every other thing a normal man goes through. Are you following me now? And once in a while, you can tell I carry some God. And that's why when he entered the temple at the age of 12, he challenged the wise men. 
a challenge the, the Sadducees and the Pharisees. Men that don't understand the Bible, they cram. Jesus, help me tonight. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Yeah? When you try to quote the Bible anyhow, they will ask you, why are you quoting it that way? I thought you are the Messiah. But even with all the manifestation, what God said upon him did not come to pass until the time was right. Look at somebody, tell them, let your, may your time be right. May you have grace to be patient until your time is right. Sit down for a few minutes. Now there are many lessons we can learn through the bathing of Jesus. Are you following me now? And I said Mary was a normal human like any other woman. But when the power of God came upon her and chose her, may you be chosen. 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 I say, may you be chosen. Though she was a normal girl, but God chose her. God said, through you, Messiah shall be born. And when an angel spoke, even Mary herself questioned the angel. This is what I want to preach tonight. Be careful. Listen to me. Mary said, How possible? I have not known a man. There are times you hear prophecy until you think that man is pleasing you. Because you look at yourself, you look at what prophecy is saying, you don't look the same. Am I communicating? Mary asked the angel, Are you sure what you are talking? I don't know man. After the flesh, and you are saying, I shall be pregnant. Do you know what you are talking about? The same way when an angel told Sarah, Abraham, tell your wife she will be pregnant. Sarah questioned the angel. Do you know the age of my husband? That you are talking about me carrying children. There are times a prophecy can come over your head. So much that you can even question the prophecy. Oh, you're not hearing me again. You ask God, the man of God, does the man of God know the family I come from? This one that is talking, does he know the kind of battles in my father's house? Sarah said if the angel will know the age of my husband he will, re he will, re he will remove the statement and re re redo it again and when Mary had the angel saying the Messiah shall be born through me if it were today he will ask the angel are you mad there are times a preacher is preaching message you are saying man of God this one is nice but do you think it's practical that me of all the people I can be a millionaire. It has not been possible even from my grand, grand, you know this, my grand, great, 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 great. Somebody's coming from nowhere and saying, Emma, you shall drive a Range Rover. When you look at, when you look at yourself, you look at Range Rover, you are, you are not anywhere, even in the neighbor. <laughs> Leave a Range Rover, took, took himself. It's not even a prayer point. A scooter. Okay, okay, pick it, pick it. But by the mandate of God, it's just declared it shall be. Now listen to me. The message we learn, Jesus, number one, was God in the flesh, but it had to take right time for the God in him to be made manifest. The beauty is a hard prophecy. Oh, listen to me. When Jesus was being dropped in the womb of her mother, the 12 disciples were not there. Number two, they were not aware. When your time comes, disciples will come. No, 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 there are things I'm talking here. Are you following me here? Meaning to say, help us. We'll do what? Come to start. People to help you. People to guide you. To walk with you. When time is right, God will send the right people. Has told one of his disciples, When you are seated under that tree, I already saw that man was the prophetic himself. When he was choosing the disciples, he said, Sir, even under the tree, I saw you. And the Lord showed me that there is a man there by the name of the male. You will be one of the people that will walk with me this journey. When your time is right, I pray nothing will delay your timing. I say, I pray nothing will delay your timing. I pray nothing will delay your timing. When your time is right, God will do something. He will send you disciples. 
Jesus never had disciples until he was launched to the work. When he went to the temple at the age of 12, he did not go with the disciples. He went with his mother and his father. God help me tonight. I don't know what I'm talking here. Are you hearing what I'm saying here? He only went with his family. But when time is right, his family was not needed. There was another category of family that was supposed to be unleashed. Men and women. The Bible said there were seven women. Among them, that stood by the ministry of Jesus. People that demons had been cast out of. I remember the story of Priscilla and Aquila. Women that stood. Listen, there are, there are levels you get God sent helpers. There are 12 disciples and there are seven women. And there are levels of the widow of Zerubbabel. In every stage of life. The thing is, may your time not be delayed. Because your time might also be right, but something is delaying it. Are you hearing what I'm saying here? Yeah? Your time might also be right, but something is doing what? Delaying it. Sit down. It was Jesus that can cast the devil and heal the sick. But for 30 years, he did not do much. He did almost zero. And many of us carry a prophecy over our head, but we are almost doing zero. How can I say I've been prophesied? Back I'm no longer that interested with prophecy. I do not prophesy me anymore. You are almost like you are not encouraged by prophecy. The thing is, number one, is your time right? Number two, is your right time delayed? Am I having learning something? Number two, or number one, or number two, for those who are writing. The birth of Jesus revealed the supernatural power of God. Let me show you something. It revealed the supernatural power of God. The supernatural power of God. We went to pick a man of God by the airport yesterday night. And where we were taking tea as we were waiting for his flight to arrive. arrive. One of the men of God who were with him came with one of his sons. And... A discussion on the table of men of God, a name of a particular man of God came up. And this man of God is in Rongai. He's a man that is a great man around. And when it came to the name of that man of God, somebody asked a question. Then I said, this other man of God knows about that man than me. So let him say, then let me answer. So when the man of God tried to answer, from one of the people that were seated there, the man said, one thing that I know, that man of God is very good. But that man of God is very proud. Now this man was asking, can I give, get a connection of that man? I want him to preach for me. In the sitting of the man of God, a door was supposed to be open. But somebody that we don't even know if they know him, misrepresented him, gave negative side of him. He said he's very good. But last time we were hosting him in my former church, he was very proud. I pray that people that sit in the right place where your name is mentioned for help, may they not talk about your negativity. I say, may they not misrepresent you. People that should protect, protect and talk about you to be lifted, may they not talk your negativity. Am I talking here? He misrepresented him and the man of God said, if that is the case, I'm not hosting him. He was present. He was not aware. But his name was mentioned and his image was tainted and his, his door that was open was locked. Anybody that is talking negative against you, that is making your doors to be locked, without your awareness, without your knowledge, I pray, may God turn things against them in the name of Jesus. May you be favored before people in the name of Jesus. Somebody want to help you, but they are saying, don't help her. Don't help him. May God turn things for your good in the name of Jesus. I say, may God turn things for your good in the name of Jesus. Sit down. It reveals the power of God. Now follow me. I learned a lesson. That a door can be closed, can be opened and closed without you knowing. You are busy shouting, God, open door for me. Open door for me. Open door for me. Now God has opened the door. The devil will program somebody to sit in a place of decision making. That when they mention your name, they will say, as for purity, don't try. 
I know her very well. As for her, don't try. And they will trust the counsel of that person. And that is how your doors are what? Locked. And you think God is not answering. God is busy answering. So when I sat there, I learned in this one. I said, okay. So this is how people can close doors for people. How I wish I was able to defend, but I'm not close to that man. I know him just like any other person. So when people want to talk about him, I couldn't contribute. I don't like gossip. So I, mean, I said, as far as I'm concerned, I don't, I don't know. Are you feeling what I'm saying? And trust me, I can tell you that door was locked. The question is, how many people have talked against you negatively without your knowledge? And doors locked without your knowledge. May nobody misrepresent you again. So number two, I say it, it reveals what? The supernatural power of God. When Jesus was to be born, the birth was in itself miraculous. The birth in itself was miraculous. It proved that God has sovereignty. God has what? Sovereignty. God is sovereign in nature. Because he made a woman pregnant without a man having an intercourse with a woman. It's not possible, naturally. In the realm of science, it's not possible. Are we together? But for it to happen, it proved the sovereignty of God. It had never happened before. But it proved even this dimension God can do it. In other words, there is nothing that God cannot fix. There is no crisis Christ cannot fix. So God is trying to prove to us, if I can make a woman pregnant without a man, I can make you rich without an uncle that will help you. You may be the first generation no millionaire. This side is letting me down. Let me try this side. I hear what I'm saying here. You may be the first generational millionaire without the help of the auntie. One of my daughters once told me that I called one of my aunties and she asked me, do you think I have money? Now when I came to Nairobi from Mombasa, let me share with you, sit down. I called one of my brothers who was then doing well. Are you following? That when he learned I'm the one calling him, you know what he asked me? So what have you come to Nairobi to do? I told him, I'm, I'm, I'm coming, I'm believing God. That language of believing God did not make sense. So what he did, he, I think he saved my number. Don't pick one. The next time I call him with another number, he saved it, don't pick two. I call him with three numbers. The first time I call, he will pick. The second time, he will not pick. One of my uncles was here, did the same. I went to his house. He said, hey, you are here. So what are you doing here? I say, ah, Dad, we are, we, are, we are believing God. He said, wow. <laughs> wow. Wow. So even when he said that, I said, okay. My help is not in the hand. You're not following me? Initially, I thought I have my people when I go there. Then God told me your help is not in their hands. Your help is in my hand. Until I removed my eyes from them. Now doors begin to open. Now follow me here. God can make you the first generational helper. That if anybody is to be helping your family, it will come from your hands. It will come from your connection. I pray for you. That may God make you the first millionaire in your family. The first generational millionaire in the family. The first generational billionaire in your family. The first generational honorable member in your family. The first generation of successful businessman in your family. Shout, I receive it. See now, the problem is because nobody has done it, you think it's not doable. If God made a woman pregnant without a man, God can make you a private jet owner without a loan. Oh, Jesus. Oh, Jesus. No, you're not hearing me. No, I don't know if you understand this lesson. If God can make a woman who has not known a man pregnant, God can make you a private jet owner. Are you following me? Now imagine you of all the people now you are packing private jet. Does it look sad? It doesn't make sense. You, excuse me, Pastor Daddy, no, we are not chopper. It doesn't look like you. Are you following me? The Bible says, when God turned the captivity of Zion. Ah, you are not following me again now. When he turned the captivity of Zion, they were like them that do what? 
free because there is nothing he cannot do. Now begin to look at yourself differently. You serve a big God. Don't ask him for small things. Big God, big prayers. I pray one prayer. I finish praying that prayer. I, if my head is correct. Because that prayer doesn't look like my great grandfather in my entire family. It doesn't look like that. So when I finish praying, I say, Sir, are you correct? And I close my eye. Because that prayer was not looking normal. I know politicians have homes in the village. I have a home in Nairobi. They can tell you why rich people can never grow poor. I talked to some rich men of late by the grace of God. Are you following me? And he told me you have two houses in the village, you have two houses in Nairobi, you have three houses in Mombasa. So when he flies to Nairobi, he doesn't pay rent. He doesn't rent hotel. Do you know why life is hard for you? Because even where you are now, before flying out, you are paying. <laughs> no, you already agree, isn't it? <laughs> when you leave here, go to Mombasa for anything, you are going to rent or take hotel. You are always spending. Now the one that is rich, even where they are now, they are not paying. Are you following? You, you are sad. So life is easy for them. And when people know you have money, they want just to favor you. Money begets. Poverty begets. No, you are not talking to me. Money begets what? Poverty begets what? So when you are rich, we want to pay for you. No, you, don't, you are flying now. No, don't worry, I'll pay. No, 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 I'll pay, I'll pay. You are battling. I'll pay, I'll, I'll pay, I'll pay, I'll pay, I'll pay. You, when you are poor like this, you are begging, please pay for me. They want to do you good so that when they are in need, you can show the favor. But the way you are now, they know even that in the next tomorrow, in the realm of the prophetic, they can see you are tomorrow. They are not seeing any help coming from your hand. God must correct our life. You are not saying amen now. And you are not saying amen now. And you are not saying amen now. It reveals the supernatural power. See now. That God is having. Does it make sense now? So if you can make a woman that does, have, that has never known a man to be pregnant. God can make you a governor in this country. God can make you the next member of parliament. You are not hearing me again. Either by nomination or by election. God has power to create. If he created man, he can create wealth. He can create position. He can create power. He can create influence. Am I talking here? If he created man and gave a man a woman, he can create power and influence. He can make nobody somebody. Are you following what I'm saying here? So shall it be in the name of Jesus. So shall it be in the name of Jesus. So shall it be in the name of Jesus. So shall it be in the name of Jesus. It creates what is not there. And it makes it real. Number three. Or number two. Lesson we learn. God used what is weak to fulfill his purpose. We are learning this thing through the birth of Jesus. Are you learning something? Are you learning something? God uses the weak things to manifest his power, to show his greatness, to pull what is not in existence into existence. In 1 Corinthians chapter 1, the verse is 27. He said God uses the weak things of this world to bring to shame the things that are strong, the foolish to challenge the wise. That's why the Bible says, others trust in horses, others in chariots. But those that doesn't trust in horses and chariots that are looking weak, 
God taking those ones. Are you following me? Give me First Corinthians chapter one verse twenty-seven very quickly. From New King James version, if you have or King James original, he uses the weak things, but God has chosen the foolish things of the world. For you see, you are calling brethren. Chapter one verse twenty-seven. Yes. Verse 27 says, But God has chosen the foolish things of the world uh -huh. to put to shame the wise. To put to shame the and, wise. And God has chosen the weak things of the world uh -huh. to put to shame the things which are mighty. Uh -huh. Are you there with there now? Now when God wants to show himself, he doesn't pick a son of a president. He picks a son of a peasant. A daughter of a non-entity. A daughter of somebody that nobody knows. Then he make you something. Because if he uses the son of Kenyatta or the son of Ruto or the son of Kibaki, it may not look God. It will look the connection of their family. It may look the money they have. But imagine God is using you. You that even your grandfather's name cannot ring a bell. Are you hearing me? Your grandfather's name cannot ring a bell. When they bring a bell near his name, he cannot ring. There are people in this country when you bring a bell near their name, it begins to ring by itself. King, -ling, king, -ling, king, -ling, king, -ling. <laughs> Are you following me? Now, God uses somebody that even his father, even in your village, nobody knows him very well. They know you by your great grand, your family name. Oh, you let me karibu na wapi? No, you're not hearing me again. Because sabu kwenu akujulikani, so unatafuta tajiri ama mwezimu wa moja mwenye alikufa. Unasema na joka kina fulani. So ukiwa kwa kina fulani, kwetu ne. <laughs> Unanelewa? Ukikuja kwetu kipita center, unaona kwa kina fulani. Hiyo kina fulani najulikana because their name can ring watu. If God be God, He will use your name to give your family rele relevance. I said, God will use your name to give your family relevance. In the name of Jesus, they may have not known your grandfather, they may have not known your father, but by, your, by the power of God in your life, they shall know your family. Are you hearing me here? struggling to explain your home, you need to pray some prayers tonight. No, this side is not taking me serious. Are you hearing what I'm saying here? If you can struggle to explain the name of your father, the name of your grandfather, you have serious prayer to do. When Wavinia Deity tries to talk in this Mulolongo, on this Machakos, even before she became a governor, the dad's name ring bell. Now she has taken it to another level. That name cannot die. And politicians have mastered that name. Christians, we are very foolish in that area. God for us all, we don't care. And it's a name. The back of God says, I will make your name great. No, you're not hearing me again. The Bible says, I will make your name great. Well, there was a time I was in the area, in the area, and I called, I called my daughter, Amima, I told her, there is one, this lawyer who used to be representing, you remember that story? I told you about a woman that was representing another organization, I don't want to mention the organization. You remember the story? And she told me that law, judge, I don't know, judge or lawyer was a very known, when I was passing, they showed me the home. They said, you see these houses, a home that looks like a city. He said, belong to one, I don't know, judge, but I don't know, one senior lawyer. So when I passed, I asked her, do you know one? She said, I will check. Then she told me, I can confirm it was a very renowned person. Then I said, when I was passing, I said, God, this was not a great man of God. And by your help, I'm a great man of God. Let it be said when people are passing, this is the home 
of the prophet. This is the home where Pastor So and So is coming from. This is the home where Sister, when people want to identify with it, the family of Joseph was not known by anybody until Jesus manifested. Joseph was nobody. Mary was a nobody. But when Jesus was made manifest, are you following me now? Now everybody wanted to associate with the home that Messiah comes from. You may not be coming from a great home, but a great home will come out of you. I say, God say, I will make your name great. You may not be coming from a great home, but a great home will come out of you. I say, great home will come out of you. Great name will come out of you. Great name will come out of you. A name that carry influence. When they mention your name, favor will be given. I told you last week, there are people you cannot arrest even if you're a very arrogant policeman. Because arresting them can make you lose your job. Am I saying the truth? I had a problem. Mama knows the story. I've never been arrested before. Never. I've never entered cell before. That day, one policeman became arrogant and pushed me in cell. Are you following? Hey, who do you think you are? Remove your shoe. Remove everything. I say, hey, don't talk. Hey. I say, but I can call. I can call somebody. He say, you have right to call somebody. Then I call mama. I told her they are taking me through cell. <laughs> mama said, I'm coming there. I said, <laughs> let me tell you, mama is dangerous. So <laughs> put your hands together for Jesus. You need to marry a woman that can fight for you. Are you following what I'm saying? Or a man that can fight for you. This one that is the one fighting you. Holy Ghost. Holy Ghost. They are not shouting. Holy Ghost. So I call one police officer, my friend. And I said, I'm in a station somewhere and some of your boys are pushing me in cell. Then calls came from everywhere. I did not enter cell. When I'm standing there, he told, he want, give me any police that I want to talk to. They said, yeah, get out. So you think you know people, you want to call, call, call. Say, yeah, we are not going to talk to that person. Then he called the OCPD was not in the station. He called the OCS was absent. DTO was absent. DCIO was absent. Then he called the, the, the traffic, the call came from traffic headquarter, police headquarter, every headquarter called. Within 10, 15 minutes. I'm not in cell, but I'm seated there, I'm waiting to be taken in. I've been taken by brought back. They took me to the cell. When I enter cell, they said, no, come, make your calls first. Then we can take you in. You know, I've removed one shoe. I didn't know. But they, <laughs> I, mean, I thought you remove all the shoes. They said they will steal one of your shoes, so they took me out to take one of my shoes. So when they went, they went, I went to take one of my shoes, I did not come back. They said, make calls. When I collected, they called the OCPD. OCPD called, OCS called, DTO called, the Nairobi Regional Commander called, everybody called. They say, who is that pastor? Everybody is at standstill. Five minutes, the guy came. I've never seen police give people money. It is people who give police money. Police gave me money that day. I hear what I'm saying here. He said, Sir, what did we do that we brought you here? That everybody's calling. God must give you relevance. You cannot serve, you cannot serve God and be a useless person. I, I'm saying you cannot serve God and be useless personality. You must be a very serious personality. Am I talking here? Few minutes, five guys from Air Force came because they saw my sticker and they called the Air Force. They said, One of your senior guys is here, he's causing every problem. Please come and see what we can do. So when they came, they said, Man of God, this is what, what did you do? I said, I don't know. They, why are you here? They told the, the guy, let, 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 let him go, let him go. So everybody's like, No, we are sorry, sir. We did not mean to. Are you following? We did not mean may people think of doing you evil begin to beg you. I said people that plan evil against you, may they beg you. In the name of Jesus. Oh God will make your name great. And when they heard it is prophet, everybody called. My case was a traffic case. The, 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 the DCIO 
the, the normal regular police, the, the traffic headquarters, everybody was calling. So a lady began to now tell me, Pastor, can I have your number? You know, I'm married near your area. I've wanted these people to remove it from this place to a particular station. I know you can help me. Do you know why she said I can help? By the kind of calls that came. She can tell this man can, can, can help. So when I finished like that, please you come. Pastor, you can poof well. Don't get angry. If I check 2,000. Another one say, Pastor, I don't have a cash. Can I give you something? I just want you to pray for me. When I check like that, 1,000. I say I'm collecting offering in the police cell. Shout out here. Oh, this my car. Where did it pass? Any traffic for that area? They know me. They say, Pastor, <laughs> this person has brought us problem. Most people say, Pastor, I was on leave, but you made me to come to work. I'm not talking about those years. Old. I'm not talking about those years. You when they raise you, no more is better. Who we'll kick your dog, bang, get out, and you behave. God must make your name great. I say after this prayer, your name will ring a bell. Look at your man. I say after this prayer, your name will ring a bell. Your name will ring a bell. Your name will ring a bell. Your name will cause favors to come to your family. Because of your name, people will be favored. Ah, I say because of your name, people will be favored. So Jesus, Bath revealed God's supernatural power. Does it make sense now? It proved that God can do the impossible. Does it make sense? Because if a man, a woman that has never known man can be pregnant and naturally, practically give birth, that one beats science. That one challenged chemistry. Are we together here? It means God can do the impossible. Number four, number three. Lesson we are learning by the birth, from the birth of Jesus. I said God uses the weak things to fulfill his mission. You may have not gone through school. I deal with a man who is a businessman who they told me left school in class 3. Which class? No, you're not talking. Which class? But he's a, a multi-millionaire. He cannot speak good grammar. He cannot speak English. Swahili self, if you speak, you will know there is a problem. But God has blessed him. Me, I'm not looking at it from how people look at it. I'm saying if a class 3 can make it, I have master's degree, I can make it better. If somebody of class 3 can make it, you have PhD, you have bachelor's, you have a degree, you have, you have doctorate, you have whatever, you have the certificate of form 4. A class 3 student, cla eh? pupil, it should be pupil, isn't it? A class 3 pupil should not challenge you. And they don't have God, and they have class 3. You have God, and you have master's degree. Hey! Somebody with class 3 and without God, you in form 4 certificate with God, who is better? Class 3 is not student, isn't it? It's pupil. No be abuse, so. but it's the truth, isn't it? Class 3 should be what? Without salvation, without Christ, you with papers. And with God, between the two of you, who should be better? Now talk to me, who should be better? So you must get angry. Maybe there are things I look at it, I interpret, I get out of that place, I'm angry. So what kind of nonsense is this? This nonsense must, this must, my nonsense must stop. So God uses with somebody who is weak not somebody who is wicked. Write it down. God uses people that are weak, not people that are wicked. Weakness is to the soul and to the flesh. But wickedness is to the spirit. You are not wicked in your soul. You become wicked from your spirit man. But weakness is on the soul and on the flesh level. Weakness is at the level of mortals. 
wickedness is in the level of immortals. So God does not work through people that are wicked. God works through people that are weak. Somebody shout I hear. I say shout I hear. I say shout I hear. Number five or number four? Oh, nobody's writing. Huh? We are learning a lesson that warfare will always surround any bad thing of a major breakthrough. Warfare will surround any breakthrough that is major in your life. Any major breakthrough in your family will be surrounded by battles, by warfare, by challenges. So you are believing God for money. Real money will not, I have come to realize, listen to me, that I am kind of the people that anything good that I must touch, I must fight for it. No, I have known myself. I'm not that kind of group that get things on a silver platter. No. I have known myself. You know the problem with many believers? You don't even know who you are. You need to know that I am the kind that it will not be easy for me to make it. So if I don't prepare my skin to fight, I will not come out. Are you following what I'm saying here? So I have identified that everything I've ever had, even marrying a woman, to keep under my house, I had to fight her. This side is letting me down. Let me try this church. Are you hearing what I'm saying here? You must know yourself so that you are ready for war. And that's why I don't care who leaves me and who comes to me. Because I know it's not by who comes, it's not by who leaves, it's by God that liveth. Are you together here? He said, By God that showeth them mercy. He said, Not to him that runneth, not to him that willeth. But it is God that shows. So I have known that for me to get even a phone, I must win one. That is Robert. For me to wear a new shoe, war. For me to put on a new suit, war. For me to do a pay rent, war. I must war in the spirit so that my things are released. They are never released easy. But the challenge with believers because the name of the Lord is a strong tower. <laughs> so you sit and wait. They are sit and wait people and they are fighting ye. And did you know what I said? They are sit and wait and they are fight ye. Oh, they are not hearing anything. So there is a category of fight ye. There are people that are great, their birth, their growth. Their blessing is covered around war. Moses was a great man. Do you know the battles that surrounded his birth? Young men had to be killed because Moses was to be killed among them. When there's greatness around you, people may die. But I'm talking to somebody here. The mother had to plan to go and throw him in water for adventure. Somebody will pick him and show him mercy. His bathing was not easy. When Jesus was born, his bath was not easy. Because he was a great man. Samuel, the sharpest prophet, his bath was not easy. The mother was barren for many years. He had to make a vow. And he said, God, if you give me a son, I will give you a priest. There are level of greatness that is surrounded by warfare. Listen to me. For you to bath any greatness, maybe you are not my kind. Maybe you are the kind that will say that people will give you. But if you are my kind, you must fight. For you to build a house, fight. For you to stay, buy a house in this Nairobi, fight. For you to buy a car and drive, fight. For you to marry a woman or a man, fight. For you to get a job, fight. Anything you have to achieve, you must fight. the kind of the, the, the fight he <laughs> and the fight go and fight he so I will sit and calculate and wait more in the spirit before I attack am I communicating here so you, the birth of Jesus shows us a message 
Now every greatness, every breakthrough that is major in our life may be surrounded by warfare. Jesus, his path was surrounded by warfare. Moses have given example. Samuel have given example. I can give countless examples. Are we together here? Are we together now? Number six. Lesson we learn through the birth of Jesus is that God wants to rule the world through us, as the church. God wants to rule this world through us, Christians. Exodus 22, verse 30. says likewise you should do with your oxen and your sheep uh -huh. it shall be with its mother seven days on the eighth day you shall give it to me uh -huh. and you shall be holy men to me you shall not eat me torn by beast in the field you shall throw it to the dogs it shall be holy unto me consecrated the Nazarite together now. There are kind of lifestyle we cannot live because God wants to use us to control this world. He said they shall not eat certain kind of food. When a Nazarite was born by the name Samson, the mother was given instruction, don't touch his air. When you are a Nazarite in your family, now listen to me, I'm talking. If you're a Nazarite in your family, you must define what kind of a lifestyle is God requiring of me. Are you following me now? Oh, I'm not talking to somebody here. Can you hear what I'm saying? If it is true you are a Nazarite in your mother's house, you are a Nazarite in your father's house that should bring salvation, there is a kind of life you cannot live. You may want to, but you are forced not to. You may want to, but the kind of deliverance in your house will force you not to. You want to be in the club every Friday, dancing and enjoying. But when you remember the burden of your family and the word God said over your head, you will not go there. You would rather be in the church praying all the night. Am I communicating? The Lord said you should be the one to go abroad, to open door for your sibling to come abroad. When you remember that prophecy, you will not go and do things others are doing because you, you don't live their life because you're not going to receive what they're Am I communicating here? He said, Ye shall be holy men unto the Lord. Neither shall you eat anyhow. Neither shall you drink anyhow. Neither shall you live anyhow. So this anyhow thing, I don't like it. Because some of us don't even know who we are. See that says, I know who I am. And when you know who you are, you will define how you behave. You will define what to eat. You will define what to drink. You will define what to talk to. Who to walk with. You are a Nazarite. Every family has a savior. Joseph was to be the one to save their family. But it took him battles. Are you aware? The fact that you are the Joseph of your family doesn't mean you are going to save them anyhow. Before you save them, eh, there are some prisons on the road. There is a pit waiting for you. There, are, there is a stranger they want to sell you. They must put a price over your head. There is a challenge. There is a Potiphar's wife somewhere. So you think because they said you are the Joseph of the family, so no, no, yeah, uh -huh. I'm the Joseph. Of the <laughs> Before you get to the palace, there is a prison. Am I talking here? Before you get to the palace, there is what prison? Because it is the, it is in the prison that a man that will announce you is waiting. Now you don't have to, you don't have an excuse. Listen, because you have to be in the prison, sir. Because the prisoner is waiting for you to take you to the palace. Many of us are avoiding prison. God took you through a small prison like that. Eh? You want hell to break loose. God is saying you must stay there. There is a man that you must wait until he dream. When he finishes dreaming, you will interpret his dream. Now when he goes out because of your prophecy, he will come back and help you. But you don't want to wait for him to dream. You want to come out. Now, you are not hearing what I am saying here. 
you are in a hurry, I cannot stay here. Hey, he's hot. God is saying he's hot, but he's not burning you in there. I put a man inside there that will announce you to the king. Now you understand why you must fight? You understand why you must fight? My son fought, he said, Papa, I want to resign. I say, you are not going anywhere. Stay there. You remember? You can't resign. The beauty is the fire is hot. Are you burnt? I told you last week, there is a level it comes in fire. You remember what I said? There are levels it comes, but there are levels Pharaoh must eat grass. Woo! Sit down. Jesus, number six or number seven, Jesus came to represent God to the fallen human race. Okay? Jesus, we are learning as a lesson that Jesus came to represent God to the fallen human race and reconcile man to the America. It was a reconciliation process. Restore and reconcile. Restore and reconcile. Restore and reconcile. Restore and reconcile. So it was not only restoration, it was also reconciling us back because we had rebelled. Are we together now? And that was the transaction that has made us to sit here today. The second or the last one. The birth of Jesus also restored the glory that we lost. I will say something there. To restore the glory that we lost. I will explain something. Adam misbehaved with the glory that God gave man in Genesis chapter 2. The Bible says God told man, go and have dominion over the fish of the sea, over the birds of the air, over the fowls, over the, over, the, over the things beneath the earth, things creeping on the earth, and every dominion was given to what? To man. And man had power to name animals. Thinking they need help when they did not ask you for one. Anytime you help somebody who doesn't ask you for help, they will blame you for that help. And that's why these days I don't put my mouth in people's issues. Now, God saw it was not good for a man to be alone. He gave a man what? A help. And when he gave a man, because what God gives is perfect. Adam said, wow, the bone of my bone, the flesh of my flesh. The name shall be called Eve, woman. Are you following me now? Now when Adam messed with the glory that God gave him, follow me, when God came to ask him questions, he told God, this is the problem you gave me. So God said, I'm helping you, you're blaming me. Going forward, if a man finds, I don't give any more. Oh, you're not, you're forgotten. Adam was given by God. When Adam blamed God, God removed his hand. He said, I will never give any man, any woman something. Fine. If he that finds, to find is to look for. You don't find what you are not searching. You must search, look for, by the time you find. So when you find, finish. You don't blame anybody. You are not hearing me again. So when he's burning you out in your house, now you aren't finding more. Somebody shout fire. Shout fire. When I light not, I said that. Are we together now? So Adam messed with the glory that God gave. Sit down. Adam messed with the glory that God gave. Are we together? Then Jesus came to restore. glory that Jesus 
restored to man was the ability to get back his place as it were with God to fellowship with God. But the dominion aspect to own anything that is of the earth, below the earth, Adam gave it to Satan by lack of knowledge. Now follow me, I'm talking something here very sensitive. Are we together now? Now, when Jesus came, Satan challenged Jesus at the mountain when Jesus was praying. And he told him, sir, turn bread, turn stone into bread. Do this, do that. Jesus said, you know, man shall not live by bread alone. Are we together? Now, follow me. Is there somebody here? When he told Jesus, turn stone into bread, Jesus challenged him. And Jesus told him, it is written, that man shall not live by bread. But when he told Jesus, bow down and worship me, I will give you everything, half of this, that if, if anything you want, I'll give you half. Those are three things. Number one, turn stone into. Jesus challenged by the Bible. He said, you shall not, man shall not live by, so I can live with that one. That was challenged. Number two, bow down and worship me. He wanted Jesus to change the order of protocol. Follow me here. Follow me here. Jesus has come to restore and to reconcile. Are we together? So he want Jesus to interfere with the protocol. Jesus challenged him again and said, you shall only worship the Lord. Now you are not hearing. Number three, if you try, I will give you half of my wealth. That part Jesus did not challenge. Oh, you are not hearing. The first part turned the stone into bread challenge. Worship he challenged. But I will give you half of my wealth. Jesus kept quiet. Jesus said the first two areas you don't have jurisdiction. But this one I know Adam missed. It's part of the things I've come to handle. Are you following me? And the fact that Jesus kept quiet about it is because he knew something about it. Satan was not talking from ignorance. He was talking from the point of knowledge. He said, I will give you. You can't give what you don't have. No, this church, you are letting me down. You cannot give what you don't have. And Jesus did not tell him, those things you are saying belong to my father. Jesus kept quiet. Areas that he knew Satan was lying, he challenged. But areas he knew he had jurisdiction, he kept quiet. And that's why prayer does not bring money. This side is letting me down. Are you hearing me here? Fasting does not bring money. You must receive the wisdom of the serpent. Ability to dissect within the storms and go into the dark place and collect and bring it out. I will teach on the mystery of Isaiah 45 one of these days. It's my heart. Are you following me now? I think I need to teach on this next Sunday. Let me teach on this next Sunday. You remind me, are we together? Because this year we are going to be millionaires. But there is a wisdom you need to go to the city and get it and bring it. He told Jesus, if you bow down, Jesus said, leave that thing. The Bible said, don't worship any other God, but if you turn stone into bread, Jesus said, the man shall not live by. But when he said, I will give you half of my kingdom, Jesus kept quiet. And that's why he preached last time and I said, you can fear God and die poor. Oh, you're not hearing again? <laughs> you will go to heaven, but the story of a rich man and a poor man. The man who was poor here, he was even poor in heaven. And that's why gospel is not easy to be preached. I am praying in this church that God will give me some Joseph of Arimathea. Men that have money that can buy linen. Men that can negotiate with kings and governors. Men that can have, they have money to negotiate. Am I talking here? That can remove the shame of the from the from, from the from the cross. Because the body of Christ was lying naked on the cross. Shame. It took a rich man to negotiate and say, Give me the body. I have power and money to bury. You're not hearing him again. What takes shame out of the church is not prayer, it's money. What will take shame out of your life is not tongues. It's not a what? It's what? 
For you say money answereth all things. 99% of your prayer point need money. Only 1% need God. What do you think I'm winning? Are you hearing me here? My daughter, 99% of your prayer has nothing to do with God. If we give you 100 million now, next Sunday, we will, we will shock us. Am I talking? Next Sunday, we are shocked. The way you land and the way you manifest, you will shout power. Money is top nonsense. When you have money, you reduce statement. When you have money, you don't write paragraph. When you have money, you don't explain things. When you have money, you don't talk too much. When you have money, you don't explain yourself. When you have money, don't introduce yourself. Am I talking here? When you lack money, you will say, I'm, the, I'm so and so, the son of, the grandson of. No, I'm, you know, I'm the great, great granddaughter of. You are poor. When you're in, you say, I'm sad. You say, oh, sad. So you are the one. Power. But when you are poor, I'm Daniel. Read Daniel. Daniel, the son of who is your father? My grandfather is. You know, then the, you, are, you are poor, sir. When you realize you are explaining your name more than three times, you need to do this prayer we are going to do here. Touch your neighbor, tell them, Are you going to pray? Are you following? You just need to say, I'm Robert. Uh, they say, Robert the prophet. You say, Yes, sir. God bless you. I'm just getting you angry. So when we pray, you know how to pray. Sit down for a few minutes. I said there is no crisis that Christ cannot sort. Are we together here? There is no crisis Christ cannot handle. You may be in a crisis, but with Christ, it will, it will be handled. Somebody shout, I receive it. I say, shout, I receive it. The birth of Jesus is a proof that God fulfills his promises. The birth of Jesus is a proof that God fulfills promises. Isaiah chapter 9 the verse is 6 The birth of Jesus is a proof that if God says something he will do it. Are you learning something? Is a proof if God says something he will do it. It doesn't matter how many years it will take. Once the time is right, he say when at the right time, God will make it beautiful. Oh, are we together again? He say at the right time, God will make it beautiful. Read for us. What does it say? For unto us a child is born. Ah. Uh -huh. And to us a son is given. Uh -huh. And the government will be upon his shoulder. His shoulder. And his name will be called Wonderful. Wonderful. Counselor. Counselor. Mighty God. Mighty God. Everlasting Father. Everlasting Father. Prince of Peace. Prince of Peace. Those are five attributes. And that's why this ministry is placed on peace. Shalom. The Prince. The peace that go beyond you. There's no way you can be in this church. Even if you don't have money, you enjoy some peace. Yeah. Or you just make sure that you don't have it, but you are enjoying some peace. That's why you can't die before you see the manifestation of God. This was a prophecy given 400, 500 years before Jesus was born. Theologically, they argue. Isaiah did not live to see, but it still came to pass. There are prophecies that it may be given by a prophet. You may, the prophet may not even be there at that time. But when once God said, it has to come to pass. The same Isaiah chapter 7. Give me verse 14. 7 verse 14. It says, Therefore, Therefore the Lord himself will give you a sign. The Lord himself will give you a sign. Behold, the virgin shall conceive and bear a son. A miracle will happen. And shall call his name Emmanuel. This is a prophecy given many years before Jesus even is. Even, I, I believe even Mary was not born. I believe when the prophecy was given by Isaiah, Joseph had not been born. But the birth of Jesus is a proof that once God says something, it will happen. I said it will happen. I said what God said will happen. Isaiah was not there to see it, but it came to pass. Rise up on your feet. 
That can open a door. You just hear a voice. Who is that? Oh, quickly, quick, quick. go ahead, go ahead, go ahead, go ahead, open. But there are certain people. Who is that? Um, so, where are you coming from? 